Good morning. How's everyone doing? We're a couple of minutes out, but we wanted to get the video started so that you have some time to post some questions if you have them. We're going to wait until exactly 11 o'clock to, to get started on the presentation. Um, thanks so much for joining us and just give us a minute or two to get started, okay? No questions yet. And then... mm -hmm. Hey, how are you? Thanks for joining. Yeah, people commenting already. And thanks, guys, for uh, posting your questions on the on the wall of the event and keep them coming. We're uh, prepping Mr. Old Mixon for all of your questions as we go through the presentation. Okay. All right. Good questions. Morning, everyone. Hi, guys. My name is Christine Anderson. I am the public affairs specialist for the agency and the person that's been engaging with all of you on our social media uh, platforms. So thanks so much for joining us on our very first Facebook Live event. Um, this is the first time we're attempting to try this type of uh, events. So give us a little leeway as we're figuring it out as we go. Um, we're, uh, we're, we've shared the slides for this event that are shown behind us here on this page for this live video as well as on the wall of our Facebook page. It's also on our, adver our, our advertising article on our website. So if you need to refer back to that, it's going to be there as well. Um, I've already gotten a question about whether or not this video is going to be shared Later, yes, I'm going to post it on YouTube and on this page as well so that you can refer back to it. Um, just make sure you post your questions as we go along through the presentation on the side. I'll be monitoring, the, monitoring those and um, posing them to Mr. Oldmixon throughout the presentation so that we can make sure everyone's questions are answered. Um, and without further ado, I just want to um, thank Mr. Oldmixon for taking the time to join us today. And let's get started. All right. Well, thank you, Christine. I appreciate um, all of you. Uh, we have a couple hundred, almost 300, I think, uh, signed up uh, to participate in our uh, very first Facebook Live event, so we appreciate that. Um, hopefully, I would, we'd like to get your feedback on this later, of course, after it's all done. Um, uh, and see whether or not this is a w this is an effective way to uh, communicate with you. Um, we think so, um, and hope you do too. So our the topic that we want to talk about um, today are the advertising rules. So advertising is um, is a topic that we have been uh, paying a lot of attention to, um, especially since. We get, uh, we have gotten complaints over the years and looking at the rules as we had them and the statutory requirements that were there as well, um, it, it became very clear that there, there were some uh, potentially either arbitrary decisions that were made or also um, some uh, Things that were just really not clear about the uh, about the advertising requirements as applied, and so we went on a journey uh, with you together, kind of a listening tour. A couple of years ago, we started our strategic plan with that in mind. It was time to tackle, um, to kind of to touch the third rail of uh, real estate in Texas, which was the advertising requirements. And so after a uh, after a long uh, period of working through drafts, uh, proposing various scenarios, um, there was a bill, obviously this last legislative session, um, that uh, provided some additional restrictions in the statute and 
uh, we have now implemented those in the form of rules, clarified a lot of the rules that we that we currently had. There's not really a whole lot that's that's new. It's just a lot more clarity around the rules. So we'll spend a little bit of time. I want to explain the basic requirements of the rule and then also um, probably the second half or the majority of this presentation will be about looking at some examples of those rules applied in a, in a theoretical um, or using specific examples uh, of potential advertisements. So without further ado, let's move along here. So the new advertising rules, uh, one of the things that you'll, that you'll notice about them is we, we actually divided uh, the rule. Previously, the advertising rule and the rule around names and business names, those kinds of things, were all integrated into the same rule. And under the new rule, we, we actually divided those. So we have a specific rule, 154, which is about names, and then another rule, which is the advertising requirements, um, and that is, in, is found in 155. So there's the title to uh, 154, use of assumed business names, alternate, and the requirement to register those with us, and then um, advertisements. The specific requirements around advertisements are found in the new 155. Now both of these uh, will become effective uh, May the 15th of 2018. So from the time of their adoption, uh, six months out, so that everyone has sufficient time to ask all of the questions and ensure that your advertisements are in compliance with these requirements. So that's a, that's a pretty good lead time uh, in, in case you need to amend any of your uh, advertising practices or plans or want to ensure that they are in compliance. So let's look at the registration and use of names. In, um, in Rule 154, all of these terms are defined. Alternate name, associated broker, assumed business name, and team names. Each of those is a distinct concept, um, and they're clearly defined in that rule. Now, all of these must be registered with the commission. All of these name, types of names must be registered with the commission, and that registration needs to be done completed before they're actually used in advertising. Okay, so if you're if you're unsure, just make sure that you register with it, register it with us first before you begin using it in advertising. Now, the broker is required to register all assumed business names. Uh, for the brokerage and also team names of teams that are used or teams that are formed and operate underneath the brokerage. Um, an individual license holder is required to register any alternate names that that individual uses, nicknames, married names, um, those kinds of things. Okay. Here's a very, very important distinction. The team name is not an assumed business name of the broker. Okay, going forward, a team name is not an assumed business name of the broker. So while the team names um, uh, operate underneath the brokerage, they are not equivalent to an assumed business name of the broker. Okay, and team names, this is the second requirement around team names, and that is every team name must end with either the word team or the word group. And that's literal. Literally, the last word in the name of the team or group must be the word team or group. So they'll be clearly identified as team names if they end in team or group. Um, and a team name cannot include a term that implies that the team is offering brokerage services 
independent of the broker, because we all know that in Texas, teams work under the umbrella of a brokerage. So even though the, even though the team name ends in the word team or group, it also can't include a term that would imply independence. Um, probably a very common one would be company. Like if you said the success company team. Uh, it ends in team, but company is misleading because it sounds like it operates independently of its sponsoring broker. And that is not allowed in Texas. Okay, so that's the, that is, those are the basic requirements around uh, the use um, of names, registration of names, and the attributes of team names. So, advertisements, turning to rule 155, advertisements. Each and every advertisement uh, must include just, a, just some very specific things. First, the name of the license holder or team who's placing the advertisement. So that can be a single person, a single uh, license holder. It can be on behalf of a team. It can include multiple um, individual license holders within a team. Um, all of those are, are possibilities. But whoever's placing the ad must be identified um, in the advertisement. And it must also include the name of the broker. So that can include their legal name or a registered uh, business name. And that name must be at least half the size as the largest contact information found in the ad. Now that size requirement we have had in place here at the agency for the last three or four years as a safe harbor. Okay, it is now embedded in the rule um, as a requirement. So the name of the broker must be contained in every advertisement and be at least half the size as the largest contact information found otherwise in the ad. And there is uh, an exception for all of these things found in uh, social media where there may be a limitation on the format um, or the, um, the length of content that is uh, available, uh, space that's available in a social media format. Um, and we won't know, obviously social media is a very creative um, area of communication. So there may come additional ways that fall under social media, additional ways to communicate and advertise that fall under the social media um, rubric or, or title, if you will. Um, and so as long as all of the required information is found within a single click away from that social media, it will meet uh, the requirement. And so that's, our, that's the flexibility uh, that we have built into the rule. Hey, Doug, we're getting some questions here that I wanted to take some time to cover. Sure. Um, we have a question about, can a team name start with team XYZ instead of ending with team? Um, no. I mean, it can, but then you're going to still, it still has to end in the word team or the word group. And so if you want it to be, you know, Team ABC group, you can do that, um, but it's it, it's not that the word team or group has to fall somewhere in the in the name of the team. The word team or group must be the last, literally the last word in the team name. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, the largest part of Rule 155 is subsection D, and it actually sets out 20 instances of specific practices that under the statute, and I'll just read the, uh, the language because we quote it in the rule in subparagraph D. For purposes of this section, and 1101.652B23 of the Act, and this is language directly from the statute, an advertisement that misleads or is likely to deceive the public tends to create a misleading impression 
or implies that a sales agent is responsible for the operation of a broker's real estate brokerage business includes, and, but is not limited to, and then we give 20 specific examples. Um, and I'm gonna give you a few highlights of those kinds of examples, but the majority of those are already in the current rule. So these are not where we, where we have clarified them uh, we may offer some additional clarifying information in the new rule, uh, but most of these examples all exist today as part of our advertising requirements. Okay, so here's a few highlights. So here's one, if, a, uh, if the use of a title by a sales agent creates the impression that the sales agent is in charge of the brokerage. Here's some examples that are prohibited. You can't use the, the sales agent, can't, can't advertise as the president or CEO or COO, other similar title in their advertisement. You can legally have that title as the owner, if you will, of a, of a business entity but you can't mislead because even if you own a brokerage, even if a sales agent owns a brokerage, that brokerage operates under the direct supervision of the sponsoring broker. That is the law in Texas. And so it is misleading to imply that the sales agent is in charge of that business brokerage. And so that's in sub four in sub in section five of that rule, um, if a, a team name includes, um, includes terms that would imply that the team is operating independently of the brokerage, that's prohibited as well. And some specific examples, and so these are including but not limited to, is realty. Uh, brokerage, company, uh, and associates. So you can't have a team name that says, for example, you know, XYZ Realty Team, because that sounds awfully independent, sounds like a brokerage company. So using the word brokerage or company or realty or associates, um, those specifically or similar terms to those um, are not allowed in a team name. Okay, here's a couple of other examples, kind of highlights. Um, if the name of the sales agent is also found in the broker's name, okay, and it's used in a way that could create the impression that the sales agent is responsible for operation of the brokerage. So let me just use a really simple example. If, if the Smith Brokerage Company is owned by Roy Smith and operates under broker Roy Smith, and yet there's a uh, there's a agent who works for that company who's the Sally who is Sally Smith, okay, and she has the Sally Smith team. Well, now you have the you have Smith appearing in both of those, and it could create the impression that Sally Smith is in charge of Smith Brokerage uh, when she's not. So so. Just those two by themselves could not be the entire advertisement. There would need to be something to create that, uh, to clarify that misleading impression. Okay? So let's see, we have another question that just popped up. Um, let's see, I understand that all team names must be registered before they can be used in advertising. That is true. And the team name must end with the word team or group. That is true. A team may not include the term realty, broker, company, or associates. That's true. If the public could be led to believe that the team is responsible for the brokerage business. Is that a question? It is. That comment, that's a restatement of everything that we have just said. Yeah. And it's an accurate restatement of everything we've said. Yeah. So although it ends in a question mark, it really is just a restatement or clarification, if you will. You, know, you understand precisely. 
Yep. And then we have um, another comment here from Kristen, it looks like, that says, so um, so ABC Real, Real Estate Group will work, question. Yes, the term, the term real estate um, is generic enough. Uh, realty has been deemed to, to be the equivalent of offering brokerage services. And so real estate is generic enough. You could be the ABC Real Estate Group. That is, That would be a legitimate team name. And then a lot of people are asking about how to register their their um, their names with us, and our general counsel has informed me that that form will be available. Um, that form will be available on our website um, in January, you guys. So just uh, sit tight. That form has not been completely developed yet. So it's coming, and it'll be posted on our website, and we'll make sure that we share it on our on our social media as well, so that y'all are all ready to go. Okay. Um, and we're also working, and I don't want to overpromise here, but we're also working on an online tool uh, that will allow you to simply uh, log in from your username and and uh, and password um, as a broker and register those uh, names, manage your names, if you will, um, in an online tool. But that's not available yet, um, and we'll have the form, the paper form. Uh, available for you guys in January to start registering um, all of those. But in the electronic form, um, your existing names will uh, will show up um, as well. And you can find those if you just, you know, um, go to license holder search on our website today, uh, you, you can see all of the names that you currently have registered um, for your brokerage, okay? Keith has one more question here that I think might be good uh, for you to answer right now. The, so since the brokerages own DBAs, how is a team differentiated from other brokerages DBAs? Okay, so so a DBA that is registered by a brokerage, that you will essentially tell us um, if the if a name that you register as a broker ends in team or group, okay, it will be a team name. And it may be, may actually be, you know, um, registered locally, let's just say with the county by, uh, by um, a sales agent who, um, who quote, owns that team name. The broker will still register that team name with us because that team operates under that particular brokerage at that at that particular time so any other name that a broker registers with us that doesn't end in team or group will be uh, deemed to be a registered assumed business name of the brokerage okay i hope that answers the question for you um and then there's one other area uh, the value of a real estate uh, uh property um, needs to be accompanied by um, a, a particular uh, disclaimer. Sorry, this one is uh, this one is about um, an appraisal. If you if you offer information about value that is based on an appraisal, that has to be um, readily available upon request of a party, unless that value is given in compliance with. Rule 535.17, which we're going to talk about here separately. So currently, for uh, broker price opinions and comparative market analysis, so BPOs and CMAs, um, and any other sales price estimate, um, if you have a tool like that or offer that kind of um, estimated uh, price or worth, uh, it needs to be, unless it's based on an appraisal, it actually needs to be um, accompanied by this disclaimer, this specific language, and we've shortened it and written it in plainer English so, in fact, um, people may understand it more readily, the distinction between an appraisal and some other estimate of sale price. So the required written uh, statement uh, was shortened, and there it is on the, on the page. So this represents an estimated sale price for the property. 
It is not the same as an opinion of value prepared by an appraiser um, under the uh, uniform standards of professional appraisal practice. Okay, those are the, spe the specific languages there found in the rule 53517 and on the screen. All right, so that's the explanation of the of the the basic rules, and I know we will have additional time between now and uh, and next May when these become um, completely enforceable to ensure that we address all of the variations that you guys come up with. Um, but for now, I'm going to show you some examples here, and we'll go through the rules applied to these specific examples. And when you take the, uh, is it the brokerage responsibility course that's coming up? You'll see, uh, you'll see similar examples like this covered as well. So here's a scenario. So here's a, our broker is an LLC called Death Star Properties owned by uh, a sales agent, Darth Vader, um, who happens to be the CEO of Death Star Properties, LLC. Um, but since he owns it and he's not a broker, he has a designated broker, Emperor Palpatine. Um, so Darth is, the, uh, is a sales agent, um, and the brokerage has registered uh, two DBAs, Dark Side, I'm sorry, Dark Side Realty. They've only registered one with us. Um, and then there is actually a team operating under this brokerage as well, and that is the Vader Supreme Team, and they registered that name with us as well. Emperor Palpatine, on behalf of Death Star Properties, registered these names with us. So here's an advertisement for sale, newly acquired planets called Darth Vader, and a uh, phone number there and uh, Death Star Properties uh, LLC, All right? Is this ad compliant? Well, yes it is. So it includes the name of a sales agent who placed the ad and the brokerage name, and the brokerage name is at least half the size as the largest contact information in the ad. So nothing wrong with this ad, fully compliant. How about this one? For sale, newly acquired planet, planets called Darth Vader. Vader Supreme Team and the phone number. Is this ad compliant? Well, no, it's not. And why not? Well, the uh, team names used in an ad, they also have to include a broker name in the ad or another assumed name of the brokerage, and that is not found in this ad. The team name is not an assumed name of the brokerage. And so um, the agent's name is in there, a team name is in there, but what's missing is the broker's name. And so you could put the broker's name, the full license name, or a registered DBA of the broker. Okay, and under our scenario, either one of those uh, would be appropriate, and now this ad would be compliant. Okay, so here's another ad for sale newly acquired plant. It's called Darth Vader, CEO, Dark Side Realty, and a phone number. Is this ad compliant? Well, let's see. Nope, it's not, but why not? So it has the sales agent's name who placed the ad. It has of the broker name, um, and it's the appropriate size, but the name of the agent is followed by the title CEO, and this creates the impression, implies that Darth Vader is in charge of this brokerage, and it's inherently misleading, because Darth Vader is not. Let's see, Christine has a question. Um, if I use Casas Cristina 
international. And Christina, are you a broker or a sales agent? I says, I also put my, my brokerage name on the materials. Is that compliant? Um, so is that, Chris, is it Chris, Christina, you have a independent DBA, your own independent DBA of Casas Christina International. Um, so that's not a team, that's your individual DBA. Um, and you have your brokerage name on the materials. Would that be compliant? Okay, and the answer is no. So your name, your individual DBA is not something that we track. Okay, you have alternate names, but the only business names that we track are the broker's business names. So if you had, you, you had that other name that Casas Christina International, you would need to have your name as well, your individual name, um, and your broker's name. Sure, and, uh, and depending on you know, how the, the, the totality of the ad, if it creates the impression that you're in charge of the business and not the broker, then it could be misleading, and you would need to correct that. Okay? I have another um, Angela, Angela's question here. Is okay. the state's compliant for husband and wife team? Uh, if the team ends in group, group or team, the word group or team, and it contains the word estates, um, there's nothing inherently misleading about that. Okay? Now, um, I, I, can, I can imagine uh, an entire ad in a context that would that might create that impression, but the, simply the word estates itself is not is not misleading, um, is not one of those that would inherently mislead. Okay. All right. Um, here's another ad for sale, newly acquired planets called Darth Vader. Vader and Company and Dark Side Realty. So is this ad compliant? Well, no, it's not. And why not? So it contains the broker's assumed business name that's registered with us, half the size, so that's correct, Dark Side Realty. Um, but the uh, team name uh, in this case uses company. And that specifically is misleading. Okay, it's contained in our rule as one of those words that is specifically uh, misleading. So we would need to you would need to correct um, that by either changing, getting a, using a different team name, um, and of course it doesn't end in team or group as well. So it also implies that Vader's in charge. Although he may be powerful, he's not in charge. Okay, so register another team name. Maybe the uh, maybe the way to um, fix that ad. All right, is this ad compliant? For sale, newly acquired planets called Darth Vader. Phone number: Vader and Associates Group and Dark Side Realty. So. No, it's also not compliant. And for that similar reason that Vader and Associates is one of those terms that makes it sound like they operate independently of the broker. Okay, so the team is not supreme. The team works under the broker. Okay, so that... Um, you could register another uh, team name that did not have the word associates and that would be compliant. Okay, so let's leave old Darth Vader behind and move to a different scenario. 
So this uh, broker is uh, with UB Homes, Inc. And, uh, and they have a, uh, a logo that's nationally recognized logo. And the designated broker for with UB Homes is uh, Yoda. And Luke Skywalker is a sales agent for broker Yoda, sponsored by with UB Homes. And that broker has registered two DBAs uh, with the agency, Skywalker Lightsaber Homes and with UB Homes without the ink um, on the end of it. So just a shortened version of their um, of the actual legal name of the brokerage entity. Uh, they also registered a team name with us, the Salesforce Group. Okay, and then uh, Luke Skywalker uh, registered an alternate name um, since an unfortunate accident. He's been known as Lefty. Okay. So everybody knows Lucas Lefty, or lots of people. So he does business under that nickname as well. So is, would this ad be compliant? Let our force be with you. Call Luke Skywalker and a phone number and with you be homes. Pretty simple, straightforward, yes. And it is compliant. So it has the name of the agent who placed it, Luke Skywalker, and a phone number and the brokerage name, uh, in this case, the one of the registered DBAs with UB Homes, in at least half the size of the largest contact information. So that ad is compliant. So here's another variation on the ad. Call Luke Skywalker. Here's the phone number, and it has a it has a, a team name there, Skywalker. Lightsaber Homes. I'm sorry, that's a DBA, not a team name. That's a brokerage DBA. This happens to have this, the, uh, the same name, or Skywalker appears in that brokerage DBA, as well as the agent's name. And then there's also with UB Homes, which is the other registered DBA of the broker. So is this ad compliant? And the answer is no, it is not. And why not? Because Skywalker is the agent's name and it also appears in a registered DBA of the broker implying that the agent is in charge of the brokerage when in fact they're not. Yoda is the broker in charge of this brokerage. And so how could you fix that? How could we fix this ad so it doesn't create that misleading impression? There's at least two possible choices. Um, one is to use a different registered um, brokerage DBA name, not the Skywalker Lightsaber Homes DBA, or uh, Luke Skywalker could identify himself as not in charge by using his actual role, which is sales agent. Okay, so he's not misrepresenting himself as a broker. He's actually, in that fix, representing himself as a sales agent, which clearly says I'm not in charge of a brokerage. Okay? Doug, I think we've got That's another clear. good question here from Tim that I think you should take a, um, a stab at. Okay. Uh, so Tim asked this, um, the rule states that an ad is misleading if it contains the name of a sales agent whose name is in whole or in part used in the broker's name and implies that the agent is responsible for the brokerage. And so that's the example that I just used here with the Luke Skywalker one. So, oh, I'm sorry, let me fix that. Yes, yeah, so Luke Skywalker if he includes sales agent, can resolve that. So um, I can't see the rest of his comment there. Oh, sorry. Sorry. There we go. So if someone with a brokerage that contains the name Smith, which is common, right, also has, and their last name is also Smith, would be non-compliant, well, 
it, if it's used in a way that it, it appears or that it can create that misleading impression, yes, then it, there needs to be a specific, um, uh, some way to correct that perception. So like this Luke Skywalker example, if, if the Smith group person, the person that's responsible for the Smith group, is, let's just say is an agent by the name of Tom Smith, and the Smith brokerage is someone else, um, a broker by the name of Smith. And so if, uh, if John Smith, in this case, is the team uh, person, and it says John Smith, comma, sales agent, then they have resolved that misleading impression by distinguishing themselves in their role as a sales agent from the operation of the broker. Okay, so that you can you can fix that, but if you just left it with you know this a Smith Group and Tom Smith or whatever, and the brokerage name was also Smith, that could be a problem. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. I have another question here. Uh, I'm not sure the answer is a simple no, unless you're just referring to ads. Okay, for example, uh, this particular one says, my wife and I are both co-owners of a brokerage, which is formed as an LLC. And she is the broker. And any advertising, real estate, um, Related activities are handled by her in her name. And this gentleman is assumed a sales agent and he handles the technology side. Um, and for some purposes, non-advertising and business related, I have to specify that I'm an owner. Nothing wrong with that. It's just in an advertisement offering brokerage services, if it creates the impression that an agent, because of a shared name, an agent uh, is in charge of the brokerage, that needs to be clarified, that's all, so that there's not a, doesn't leave that misleading impression. And that really is in advertising. So in all kinds of legal documents, you absolutely have to disclose uh, ownership and specific titles, including owner and CEO and president and all those other kinds of things. You just can't use those in advertising in a way that creates a misleading impression. So Doug, we have two people asking a similar question I thought it might be good to cover because I think some other people have referred to us this topic. Is a realtor acceptable instead of the term sales agent? Um, so realtor is a, is a license holder who is a member of the Association of Realtors, okay? That does not adequately distinguish between your role as a broker and an agent, okay? So it is not synonymous. Sales agent and realtor are two very different titles. One is a legal role and the other is a voluntary member. Now you may have to, in accordance with the code of ethics of the Association of Realtors, include the word realtor in advertisements, but that does not resolve the issue of creating the misleading impression that in fact you are in charge of a brokerage when you are only a sales agent, okay? The next, uh, the next slide has that example for us. Okay, so let's move on to so this example. Oh, and somebody followed up with that question. What about agent versus sales agent? Yeah, so. The sales agent, right? Right, so sales agent is the legal terminology found in our statute and that is the role, okay? Agent is a generic legal term used where essentially, maybe you think about it, a broker is an agent of the principal, right? So agent does not adequately distinguish between broker and sales agent. So is this ad compliant? Let our force be with you. Call Luke Skywalker Realtor and a phone number and the uh, one of the registered uh, DBAs. Is this one? Oh, sorry. This is the sale. This is the Salesforce group. This is a team name. Okay. So is this ad compliant? Has a team name, an individual name, and the word realtor? And the answer is no, because 
there's no broker name anywhere in this ad. Okay, Luke Skywalker may be a realtor, but he's a sales agent, and the team name, uh, which ends in group, and so it's an appropriate team name, um, but this ad does not contain the name of the broker in at least half the size of the largest contact information. So you'll need to include that if you want that ad to be compliant. So add with UV Homes. And now this ad is compliant. So it seems like there's a lot of confusion about realtor versus sales agent versus, so I was thinking maybe we, we touch on Jennifer and Michelle's comments here. Um, to, okay. So if a, uh, if a Jennifer says, if, if I include realtor associate and the name XYZ broker uh, in my advertisement. So Jennifer, I'm just gonna assume for a minute that you're a sales agent and your name also appears there. So if it said Jennifer, realtor associate, XYZ brokerage, would that advertisement in and of itself be sufficient? And the answer is no. So it has your name, it identifies you as a realtor, which is simply that you're a member of the Association of Realtors. It has nothing to do with your role as either broker or sales agent. You have the name of the brokerage, which is fine, but um, if there was, if it, if it was misleading in a way that, you know, your, your name, um, yeah, if, let's see, sorry. Yes, if your name is in the ad, so Jennifer, you don't have to say sales agent unless the, unless the ad taken as a whole implies that you're in charge of the brokerage, okay? But your name, your simple name as a sales agent and a broker name in the ad meets the basic requirements for names that must be included in the ad. So it's only if the use of your name creates the impression by not just the inclusion of your name, but some other attribute to mislead, potentially mislead folks that you're in charge of the brokerage. But if you remember the very first um, ad that we put up there simply had, you know, Darth Vader's name and the name of the brokerage that he was working for and a contact information call us and a phone number. Right, so that doesn't that does not imply that he's in charge um, of the brokerage, but if you include CEO or some other thing that creates that impression behind your name, even if true, um, you would be creating that misleading impression, and that would be subject to potential. Um, it would need to be corrected. Okay. All right. So is this ad compliant? Call Luke Skywalker, sales agent. So here's, he includes that um, right in the ad. And then a phone number and then a logo for the brokerage. Is this ad compliant? Well, no it's not. Because the brokerage, the logo of the brokerage is not, while it may be a legitimate registered logo of the brokerage, is not equivalent to a name a business name registered with the commission. We're, we do not register logos. We register names, okay? And so you must provide a business name to us. You can register a logo, that's between you and uh, trade the trademark, uh, you know, federal trademark. Um, um, if you can register trademark, that's not an issue. And you can use them. But the trademark itself, that logo, does not satisfy the broker name because we don't register those okay, at the commission. And the law requires us to have a broker name. Okay? So that's what I just said. The logo is not acceptable as a substitute for the broker name. All right. So if you can include the logo, but you'll also need to include a broker name in that ad. 
All right, so is this ad compliant? Let our force be with you. Call Lefty Skywalker and a phone number and a the group name, Salesforce Group. So that's a team name uh, registered with us and um, the broker name registered with us, DBA. Okay. So yes, this ad is compliant. It has all of the requirements. Just so happens that instead of Luke Skywalker, it has Lefty Skywalker, and Luke actually um, registered that alternate name with the agency um, so that people he could still be found. Okay, if somebody looked up Lefty, they would find sales agent Luke Skywalker on our website. So since he registered that alternate name with us, that would be appropriate. And that ad would be compliant. Okay, how about this ad? Let our force be with you. What's my home worth? Enter an address here to find out. Call Luke Skywalker to sell your home and a phone number and a broker name with UB Homes. That's the brokerage name. So is this ad compliant? Well, it could be if when you enter that information, it says enter your address here, the number, the result, the answer that you get um, is accompanied by the appropriate disclaimer language required by 535.17, okay? So here's an example, here's the ad, and I'm a potential homeowner, and I, my address is uh, 123 Endor Place, and so it says, I put in the information, and I get for 123 Endor Place, it's worth $200,000, and it has the appropriate specific language required by rule 535.17, that uh, reads as is there on the screen. So that very specific language says, this is an estimated sales price. And it is not the same as an appraisal um, performed by a registered appraiser under the Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice. Okay, so that, those are all the examples that we have for you. And we still have a few minutes left, so let's just see if there's some other questions that we need to get to here so, or comments to reiterate. So, so Sherry ahead. here says, so I'm understanding the use of realtor is not a substitute for sales agent and using it alone would not be compliant. Just to reiterate, that is correct. If, if in fact, the ad otherwise creates the impression that, that you, the sales agent, are in charge of a brokerage, then the simple inclusion of the term realtor does not resolve that misleading impression because, because realtor does not distinguish between your role as a broker or an agent, okay? And so it needs to say sales agent, okay? Not real estate agent, but sales agent. That's the legal terminology in the statute. I know somebody else asked that. Is real estate agent the same as sales agent? And the answer is no, because the, the term real estate agent is equally descriptive of the role of a licensed broker, okay? They're a legal agent for real estate for their principal. So sales agent is the terminology that's required. Looks to like distinguish between broker and agent. Looks like Sherry's liking that, that answer. So um, okay. I have a question from um, an offline question here. Um, it says, um, we've received the question about whether the team name can uh, use the term real estate since it's not listed in the list of prohibited terms. Uh, um, one, they've gotten conflicting answers and just want clarification on that. Um, someone stated it was okay as long as the team name ha had group or team in it. Other members uh, or other people have uh, gotten the response that you can't. So, so let me, let me clarify that. 
So a team or group name may contain the term real estate, okay? Not realty, but real estate. And then the team or group name must actually end in either one of those words, team or group. So it's not, it can't be, you know, um, it can't be team real estate. Um, it has to end in the word team or group. It can contain the words real estate. Those are very generic and not the same as realty, which is deemed, it has kind of this, has obtained this secondary meaning. Realty means the offerage of the operation of a real estate brokerage. Okay, and so that, that term cannot be included in the team name because it, it uh, implies that it operates independently, independently offers brokerage services. Okay. Um, another good question. What will Truck do with the names that are already filed as assumed business names that don't meet the new requirements? If they're already filed, can they still be used in advertising? So there won't be a uh, there won't be a grandfathering of the inappropriate use of names. So, for example, if you have currently a Smith and Associates team, okay, let's just say you have that registered already with us, okay. Um, as of May the fifteenth, that name cannot be used because it's inherently misleading. It has Associates in the team name, and that gives the impression that that team operates independently of the brokerage. So just like if it had company or realty or whatever, if you have those inappropriate names already registered, then they cannot, they can no longer be used after May the 15th. They would be directly um, um, in violation of the rule. So that's why we, why we did such a long lead time, this six month period to give everybody an opportunity to, um, phase those out, okay? Rename your teams if, if they in fact have um, inappropriate terms in a currently registered uh, team name with us. So Ka Catherine here has a, an interesting question that I thought I would, I would pose to you. So who decides what, uh, what it implies? Um, that's kind of left up to the interpretation of each individual looking at it. Seems kind of like we're still being left to wait and see. <laughs> Well, it's not, it's not a wait and see. Um, um, here's here's a, a couple of suggestions, okay? Um, if you're unsure whether or not a name or an advertisement implies that you're in charge of a brokerage. So remember, it's not just the name itself, it's how it's used in the advertisement. There are some words that simply cannot be used. We use those specific examples in the rule, okay? Including but not limited to company. Can't have company in the name of the team. If you have that today, sorry, you have to get rid of it, okay, by, by May the 15th. So um, who determines the implication, whether that implication is reasonable? Well, that's actually left to, in the, in the end, it's left to us at the agency, our enforcement division, are the ones who make that ultimate decision about whether or not the, the use of specific terminology or the ad as a whole um, violates, creates that misleading impression. And you're right, it's not always going to be crystal clear, but these rules um, create far more clarity than the current rule, um, which allows some of the team names to be a, um, to be used as a registered DBA of the broker. And so dividing that out, getting those, so that there's a, a clear legal distinction between a team name and a broker DBA was the, was the greatest step towards clarity that these rules provide, okay? Um, and remember that any advertisement where a team name is used, Okay, must also have the name of the broker in the advertisement. Okay, so separate um, registered business name of the broker.
Yeah, we haven't spent a ton of time on social media and we only have a, a, a minute or two left, but I wanted to cover a question that I think I've gotten iterations of throughout the conversation here. Um, somebody says, uh, Nicole, you're saying, so all social media accounts must read sales agent and not realtor, correct? So I'm assuming that what she's meaning is, you know, your title on your business page. Um, you know, sometimes they can have a, a, a realtor next to it in their title. Do they need to also say sales agent as well? Uh, no, no. Only if, only if the advertisement taken as a whole implies that you're in charge of the brokerage. Okay, so remember the very first ad that we used, it just simply had Darth Vader. Okay, his role is sales agent. Um, and the broker name and a phone number. Okay, that's, that is not, that does not in and of itself without the clarifying role as sales agent, that title create the impression that he's in charge of the brokerage. Okay, only if the ad taken as a whole implies that. So if you use some other term in connection with your name and your licensed sales agent, and, and if, if you're unsure, actually send it, send it to, you know, um, send it to people who don't know the inner workings of the real estate business, the real estate side of business and ask them, does this, this, does this appear like I, does the use of this terminology or this ad appear like I'm in charge? And, and in the end, remember that your broker is the, is the one who's gonna pass on all of that. And so if you're not clear, go ask your broker, okay? Show them the ad, they're supposed to approve all of that stuff, they're responsible anyway um, for your advertisements, making sure that they are in compliance. And so you can always ask your broker if you're unsure. And remember that brokerage, a brokerage, the broker in charge of a brokerage, um, can make specific rules. We can have company policies that say all ads must include ABC or must not include ABC. That's different from the requirements that we're writing in compliance with the statutory requirement. Our rules don't make stuff up, okay? The, a company can have policies that are different in addition to, but the minimum requirements are our rules interpreting the requirements of the statute which simply say an advertisement may not mislead or um, or be likely to deceive the public or create a misleading impression or imply that a sales agent is responsible for the operation of a broker's real estate business. That's what our rules, all of those rules are meant to specifically implement those requirements in the statute. And so we'll have time and, and we, we will happily continue to answer your questions. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do this again um, several times uh, between now and uh, May. And so we appreciate your being with us uh, today. And uh, hopefully this was, uh, was very helpful. So guys that are still here, um, just letting you guys know as a follow-up, what I'm gonna do is I, I have uh, taken note of several themes of questions that we seem to be getting, things like how do I register my DBA or how do I you know, change my name and all of that. I'm gonna set up a list of, of these questions and do a follow up next week with some FAQs, some examples and um, some more details uh, from this conversation as well as um, the, the full video from this event. So um, y'all can share it with everyone that you need to, people that may not have been able to attend. So um, we really hope that this was helpful um, to be able to pose those questions to the source uh, that, that would be able to answer them best. And, um, and this is our first time trying it, so I'd also love to get some feedback on our social media pages about um, you know, how you wanna interact with us. Is this a great medium to ask the questions? Would you prefer it to be in a different format? 
um, and other topics that you might want us to cover too. It's, it's important that we answer your questions and so that's what we're here to do. So if you can take some time and give us some feedback, that'd be great. Um, and uh, I'll take some time here on this on the on the chat to answer as many questions as I can today, and then, like I said, we'll have some follow up here. But I really appreciate everyone taking the time to to out of your busy schedules to spend some time with us today, and hopefully, we'll see you guys again soon. Thanks so much, and have a great day.